Coming up on First at Four, the state football championships are underway in Lexington as two mountain teams look to bring home some hardware. And an arrest warrant is issued for a former NFL player over a reported domestic violence incident. Plus, warm air has moved into the region today and showers are on the way. The latest on when rain moves in for the weekend coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts right now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, the KHSAA State High School Football Championships began earlier this afternoon at Kroger Field in Lexington. One of our two mountain teams kicked off the action today. Pikeville battling Raceland in the Class A state title game. For those highlights, let's send it over to Sports Director John Lowe. John. Steve, if there have been two programs that have built, been the class of 1A, it's Pikeville and Raceland. And for the fifth straight season, they locked horns, this time with hardware on the line. Let's go to the highlights. Trinity Row and the girls basketball team out to support the Panthers, and they'd be in the lead quick. First play from scrimmage, Blake Birchfield. Call him Butter, because he is on a roll. 85 yards down the sideline, all the way to the blue turf. Pikeville on the board, six to nothing. Rams turn now, Logan Lundy. He's gonna find Mason Likens in double coverage to put the Rams in the Pikeville red zone. That would set up this field goal right here. Six to three, the score, and it looks like we might have a ball game in the first game at Kroger Field, but not for long. Carson Wright, he's gonna force a fumble on Carson or Connor Hughes, and Deontay Stevens is gonna take it 74 yards the other way for the scoop and score. Pikeville up 14 to three after the conversion on that score. And just as the halftime gun goes off, Isaac Duty. It's going to air this one out to Wade Hensley getting some hang time on that pass and right there into the end zone. Panthers up 21 to three at the break. After a score from Blake Birchfield, Raceland would wake up a little bit in the third quarter. Lundy out to Likens again for 38 yards and this time it's for six, 28 to nine at that point. But all Pikeville this afternoon. Birchfield in the Wildcat takes the snap and rambles 32 yards untouched and into the end zone. And you know what? Count them up, big fella. You have just scored one, two, three touchdowns at Kroger Field. And Pikeville cruises late, 41-9 over Raceland. Birchfield, look at that stat line. 231 yards on 26 carries and three touchdowns. Courtney Lane Brewer has more from Kroger Field. Hey, Court. Hey, John. Well, you know, they say seven's a lucky number, and it definitely is now for the Pikeville Panthers. The seventh program state title, the third in the last four years, was secured today in that 41-9 to win over Raceland. Now, it was all maroon right out of the gate. Like you said, Blake Birchfield scored his first of three touchdowns on the first play of the game. Raceland, on the other hand, only saw the end zone once. This is title number four for head coach Chris McNamee, and he said what makes this title special is the mindset of his players. I think the main thing is this is the most selfless group we've ever had. Uh, they don't, it doesn't care who, they don't care who scores, they don't care who does what, as long as the job gets done. And, and that's, and that's a, a really uh, special part about this group. It's, it's team, team, team. Now, this may not be another historic three state championship season down in Pikeville, but one of those championships is for sure. The Class 1A state title coming back home. I'll have more from that game and all of the action here from the state finals coming up throughout the evening. But for now, I'm Courtney Lane Brewer. Back to you. All right, Courtney, thanks. Stay warm out there. We'll have continuing coverage of Pikeville's win and their return home and celebration in town at the 99 steps. And not to mention, We've got one more of these. Corbin and Boyle County set to kick off at 8. We'll have all the details coming up on Mountain News at 5.30 and 6 and Appalachian Wireless Sports Overtime. Steve? All right, John, thank you very much. Hopefully we'll have two state champions before the end of the night. Well, many fans from Pikeville made the trip to Lexington today. WIMT's Olivia Calfee talked to some of them, and she also joins us live from Kroger Field. Olivia. Go to the package. Go to the package.
Panther fans packed their side of Kroger Field with lots of noise, excitement, and pride. Our community support is another level. Like We always have support no matter what game, what sport it is. And just having everyone here, it feels like we're back at home. We're just in a bigger atmosphere. Fans of all ages were ecstatic to cheer on their Pikeville football team. My dad's a football coach, and I just love watching football. And it, uh, it makes him happy, and it makes me happy. I just like watching the cheerleaders and I like getting really excited when we score touchdowns and like it just makes me really happy. It was definitely an exciting game for Pikeville fans from start to finish, and I'm sure that it will be a very exciting trip back home. Live in Lexington, Olivia Calfee, now back to you, Steve. All right, sounds like a, a very loud uh, stadium there, having a little trouble uh, hearing us there b uh, before we went to that story. Olivia, thank you very much, and we'll hear more from her coming up tonight at 6 o'clock as she talks to fans from the mountains. Well, it has been a mild and breezy day all throughout the mountains today and even up, as you saw, at Kroger Field in Lexington. Here's the view from Triangle Park in downtown Hazard 57. The current reading there, traffic moving smoothly as the work week comes to an end here in the Queen City of the Mountains. A look further south from Buffalo Mountain here in southern Perry County, watching just a few of that, uh, just some of that overcast continuing out there this afternoon. Middle and upper 50s all throughout the region. It has been a mild day today and we will continue to see those milder temperatures because we've already got some of those showers moving in ahead of our cold front. Not a ton of this reaching the ground, but a few sprinkles yeah, right now in places like Hazard down to Jackson and even further to the west, places like Somerset, Monticello and over to Whitley City and Stearns as well. We'll continue to watch these showers head in our direction, all ahead of a cold front that promises to drop our temperatures as we head through the remainder of our weekend, or at least the second half of our Saturday. Details in a few minutes, though, on when we could see the roller coaster ride temperature wise continue. That's in a few minutes. Steve. All right, thank you very much. Well, Iran's national soccer team was greeted by cheering crowds upon their return to Tehran. The team left Doha a day after being defeated by the United States in its third match of the World Cup tournament. Crowds gathered waving the Iranian flag. Following the team's defeat on Tuesday, some Iranians celebrated as a form of protest against the regime and its crackdown on recent protests. Former NFL player Antonio Brown is in some trouble with the law. The Tampa Police Department has issued an arrest warrant for Brown over an alleged domestic violence incident that happened on Monday. Police say the former Tampa Bay Bucks wide receiver got into an argument with a woman at a home in South Tampa. The argument turned physical. Investigators say Brown tried to kick the woman out of the house and then locked her out. Police say he's wanted for battery. Brown was a member of the Bucks when they won the Super Bowl two years ago. But the team released him this past January when he walked off the field in the middle of a game against the New York Jets. Formula One is canceling the 2023 Chinese Grand Prix. In a statement, the racing series says the cancellation is due to COVID difficulties and adds that it's looking for an alternative place. This means that going into 2023, China will likely continue to lose public events, opportunities to attract crowds, and to generate revenue. Coming up on First at Four, a, f a fight over light is flaring in the British capital. Plus, showers are pushing in for part of the weekend, the very latest after this.